Welcome to Pocket Watch Podcast. I'm Zach. Cruz. Jake. And we're fucking Pocket Watch Podcast. Yes, yes sir. Laugh at us or learn with us. We're here to grow. And That's growing, we're fucking doing, man. Welcome to Pocket Watch Podcast. Uh, that's right. We got a guest <laughs> here today. Like we said, like we promised, like we always do. We got Kells, King Kel- King Kells in yes, the house. Sir. Yes, sir. Comedian, artist. We're going to get into all this shit. He's active as fuck. Follow him. What's your, what's your at? Uh, King.Kells. Uh, King.Kells. Q-U-E-L-Z. All right. And as always, yeah. it'll be bottom left frame of the video and in the description down below. Yeah, just go check it out, man. Other just- side. Instantly. Left, bottom left. I left? Yeah. Yeah. Left. yeah. Okay. You'll be your left, their right, I guess. It's right yeah. there, bro. Everybody chill. It's right there. It's cool. No, I'm confused it's already. Go <laughs> no, follow this, man. Go check him out. Because my man is active. He's a comedian. He's got a lot of different shit going on. We're going to get to it. Super dope. Uh, and at the end of the day, we're just here for a good conversation. Thanks for coming, bro. Thank y'all for having me. Hell yeah, man. This is nice. We've been, it's, a, it's been a long time coming, bro. You've been busy, bro. <laughs> I like you, man. Y'all too, man. Like, yeah, facts. shout out to y'all, bro. Yeah, we I'm said bet. We're not gonna hit you up for a month. Then <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna make you thirsty for this. Y'all made me put on my monocle, bitch. I was like, what's on, young chaps? <laughs> this is a monocle, that's <laughs> yo. Uh, everybody tuning in weekly. Thank you so much. We love you. Don't forget to like. Follow Share Subscribe Comment Tell your mom Tell your puppy t- Tell your sister <laughs> <laughs> so, Tell everybody that Kells is on the podcast man What's king, up King, king. Yeah King Kells king, My king. bad bro yep. Yeah cause Kells I ain't is, got no kingdom yet But That's right Put nah, some respect king on his name Speak it into existence Nah I like it King Kells My bad man Tell everybody King <laughs> Kells is on the podcast guys Sire King Not playing <laughs> Uh, again, uh, real quick, if you guys want to help support, there's a subscription link where you could donate any amount for month uh, monthly. If not, check out Dubby. That link is also in there. Pocket ten for ten percent off. Dope ass energy drinks. Support us. Let's get to it. Yes, sir. What's up? What's happening? What's up, man? What it is? Okay, so what's up? <clears throat> <laughs> we're gonna. I got some other topics too. So just so just so the listeners know too, like we're gonna. Fuck with King Cubs. We're gonna try to see like what he's about. I want to get into who he is and shit like that. I love this, but I got some topics I want to throw at you too. So okay. this is this is a whole event, bro. Okay. But first time I met King Kells, uh, Bruises and Blues. Rest in peace. Mm. All the comics we've had on, except for Morgan, uh, I saw at my first open mic. Mm-hmm. It's kind of cool, and we've only had four. You being the fourth one, but still. Uh, Kevin Dean, Frankie Ryan, now King Kells, super dope. He was super uh good. He was trying out new shit. You could tell, but there's something too, like with those open mics, <clears throat> that I could tell. Cause I mean, some people I feel like because when I follow them and shit, I could tell they're not really working new shit, and they're mm-hmm. just maybe just practicing the same shit, whatever the case is. But uh, mm-hmm. uh. Man, you did really good, and, and sure. uh, uh, you had the Kissimmee vibes. You know, you already knew the area. You mm-hmm. know, like you gotta get let those jokes off and shit like that. Uh, but yeah, man, it was super dope. I, I, uh, it's funny because I only followed you guys, and Us all, three? yeah, okay. Actually, the only other person I did was the other guy. What's his name that opened for um, Joey? Yo. Is there a fucking ghost in this room? <laughs> that bitch moved like twice, all right? Come on now. I'm waiting for it to fall. It's about to Come fall. on now. You looked at me the first time. I was trying to Yo! play it. Yo! No, that's just empty. I've chill, never bro. seen a can moonwalk. Ain't no fucking... <laughs> this is crazy. This is all right. It's going to move again. No, nah, it's not. Chill out. Yo, what the fuck, guys? Anyways, nah, I only follow one other guy. But anyways... uh. That's why this has been like a cool experience for me too, because I'm like, yo, I, like I resonated with everybody, like with y'all, mm-hmm. and then like had y'all on the pod, and I feel like I've been following y'all for a while, like I got a relationship with y'all, like yo, it's funny how life turns out, bro. It is. It's cool, man. It is, man. It is cool, bro. But yeah, man, let's get into it, bro. Like, so from what I know, you do stand up. I seen you at the improv. You've been working with uh, Frankie a lot and mm-hmm. stuff like that. You're super active or whatever. Uh, tell us about it, man. How you start comedy? <laughs> I got a weird ass story. Like mine's is not the typical. 
Sort. Class clown and then like so I started comedy when I was twenty five, going on twenty six. Um but I never thought I can do the shit. Yeah. Yeah. Like you know, it's it's one thing to tell jokes around your friends, but to step on stage and present mm-hmm. a joke to people who are expecting you to <laughs> yeah. present this joke and yeah. I never I respected it so much I never even tried to do it until Facts. I was yeah. damn near twenty six, bro. So <clears throat> um funny story, I went out, shout out Nate, uh, David Naboa, he he brought me to my first open mic at the other bar. Mm. When Ken Miller was running it And Couldn't get on It was too packed We went over to Copper Rocket First time I hopped on stage And did comedy Copper Rocket Copper Rocket The following Wednesday I went to the other bar And I was going to repeat And then that following Sunday Was the 18th of March 2020 COVID shut everything down Uh So I only went on stage twice Right before COVID Right before COVID And for three months Three to four Mm. months bro Just What you You had nothing to do You know what I mean You smoke right Eat right jokes Yeah (laughs) So um, finally, bro, in July, David hits me up. Yeah, I got a show, man. Come out to it. I come out. Comics drop. Uh, David was like, "Yo," he said he had a couple of comics drop. You want to hop on? I'm like, "Fuck it, yeah." I told myself I accept. I'm any- itching to go anywhere. I'm, right? I'm ready, yeah, bro. I've been waiting yeah. for three months to get yeah. back on stage again. You know what I mean? And he was like, "All right, bet." So he goes talk to him. Comes back. He's like, "Yo, man," he said, "You, you want to hop on stage? I had a couple of comics drops. You want to do five minutes?" I was like, "Yeah." Go up there, do good enough to the point where he's like, all right, bet. I'm going to put you I got this room for three months. This is during COVID now. Like, yeah, nobody's... Yeah. There's it's nothing like open. secret. Yo, nothing's downtown Orlando real. during, like, COVID time, bro, mm-hmm. where it was, like, right before they opened up and nobody else was open. Like, mm-hmm. this is before that, right? Like, this is where... This is before downtown opened. This was I Drive. Mm. Point Orlando at Tin Roof. All these little oh, secret okay. spots open. Yeah. Up. Tin Roof. Tin ah, roof. oh shit. Tin yeah, roof Tin Roof's open. an outdoor area too. Yeah, so that's why outdoor. Why they, there. they have like this little country room. And they got another room called the Green Room. The Green uh-huh. Room they did with comedy because this dude named Vinny Beetle comes down from uh, Connecticut and literally just he's a hustler. So he comes yeah. out here, hustles all ten of the people that's walking around for the day to enter the show. Sells out the fucking room mid COVID. And this is Florida COVID still too. Like yeah. we open, but we're yeah. not no. open. No, 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 no. Yeah, niggas yeah. are still scared. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he sells his room out three times in a row, right after this after the show, and he puts me on the day like the first day he put me on. It's my first showcase. So I'm like, hey man, I hit him up the day of. Hey man, how long am I doing? Five, three minutes. I did my research. Five, yeah. three minutes. He was What's like, the average? he was like, yeah, no, no, no. I got you for fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Fuck it. Let's go. Got three months, bro. I got three months. I got 15 minutes. Fuck it. Let's get it. And I do it. I do a good job. I have people who come out because there's nothing to do. Wait, this yeah. was your first show out of COVID? Mm-hmm. Yes. So, so no, wait, second show. Second what, show. Okay. Back. Was this a paid show or no? I got paid. Damn. So your third show, you're already making money. My fourth show. Fourth third show. show, I got put on because other comedians dropped. Oh, okay. Okay. Yep. So, so fourth yeah. show, you're already getting paid. That's Two good, shows though. before okay. COVID. 15 minutes. Yeah. Th- then he was like, yeah, man. Hey, I got this room for the next two nights. And put you on again And all my people Who came to watch me Like 15, 20 people um, It was like Yeah we coming back tomorrow You doing it again tomorrow We gonna come back tomorrow So I'm like shit I can't give y'all The, the same, same show I'm yeah. gonna give you The and same And you're paying to get in It's 15 minutes I can't give you that though. No You just paid to get in yeah, So I bro. wrote another 15 That it, night That night Slash morning Slash afternoon Until I went Damn. on Damn And Had 30 minutes To work with Yo, It wasn't perfect it, worked, it wasn't polished But like uh, Let's just say like 8 to 10 minutes worked out of the 15 minutes then? Uh, yeah, most definitely. Like, oh. punchlines hit, but the setup was so, <laughs> it was so, like, it was you so still gotta work It was a little bit rough, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, so, <clears throat> but I had 15 minutes of material to just, all right, now I can work this shit in rotation. So, yeah. that first year was working with this promoter, Vinny. Now, he goes by Scumbag Vinny. Um, <laughs> Fucking Scumbag. Well, use your context clues. No, I'm playing. That's my boy. <laughs> I love Vinny. I love Vinny Beetle. Um, he, he, he lived by his name for me a little bit, but at the same time, that's my boy. I love him. He put me on when nobody yeah. else would ever think to do that. Facts. Um, it's the reason why I had an hour set ready in like my first two years is because putting that time coming. in. Yeah, man. So, yeah. <laughs> so, like, it took long um, enough. I didn't really even know the Orlando comedy scene until the following year. So 2021. Something. Yeah, because you're just sneaking. You're doing all these speakeasies. Yeah, right? bro. Like, yeah. bro, like, that was a crazy time. I just want to say, like, like you said, that was even before downtown open. But, mm-hmm. like, when shit was, like, not open, man, and you go out, because I was by myself. Bro. Yeah. Like, that was when me and my girl were kind of taking a break. And I was like, I got to just go out. Like, I can't be alone can't. and home and, like, isolated. Like, yeah, I was man. working out. I was running. I was doing all this shit. 
But like I would I would go out and try to see if shit's open and it was weird, bro. It was yeah. like yo, like it's like zombie streets, but there's like yeah, like bro. you said, like twenty people running across the street. And these little like like literally look like speakeasies. Like yeah, you man. knew you weren't supposed to, but everybody's like, fam, like we good. <laughs> like let's go. That's crazy. You gotta go bro. out masked up still. Yeah. You got to come out like this. Everybody shit, up. And yo, the crazy the craziest so thing about it was is Cruz was going around eating everybody's booty. Yeah. <laughs> In the middle of COVID, man, eating a with, random strangers' booty. When is not on. the best time to eat ass? <laughs> in the middle of a fucking pandemic. Everybody used to do. Mad Absolutely. sanitized. Might as well try it now. This man said coronavirus. I don't know, but it tastes like corona in this ass. <laughs> you got lime? You got some lime? You got some lime. What's this? Is that salt? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a dingleberry. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, no, but I, that's, that's super dope, bro. That's true. So, like, because this dude puts you on, like, and it's you're good at it, right? Because yeah. that could break, bro. Third or fourth time, and you're doing 15 minutes back to back. That's tough. Bro. Uh, that could break a lot of people, bro. Yeah. Like, and could, you could have a really bad experience, and like, depending on how strong you are mentally, you ain't doing that shit again. You yeah. know what I mean? But uh, turned out well. It did, man. Where it's, you got 30 minutes? That's a long time. You never get 30 minutes on my fifth show, bro. Like, it's I don't believe in coincidences, but I get in that later. It was crazy because I just knew I wanted this shit, bro. Like, like I told y'all before when we was talking, like, I used to be a dancer, but I was just like, I was good at it. Uh, I was appreciated in it. I knew a lot of shit. I was getting somewhere, but it was just like, something's missing. Like, well, I, it's yeah. not the... And we, we are going to pick up on the fish show, but or right before the fish show. What were you thinking of doing before you started comedy? Like, what was your trajectory? Like, what was you? Because you you said 25. Mm -hmm. So, like, you're 24, 25. You're like, like, this is the middle of I'm trying to be who I'm trying to be. Trying to figure this shit out. Yeah. Like, so you was working, doing what? Um, (laughs) I've been in food and beverage and hospitality since I've been in Orlando. Talker. um, First, I thought it was dancing. Then it was just like, all right. What kind of dance, bro? I'm sorry. I've been meaning to ask I'm an all-styles dance, but if I can choose, obviously hip-hop. That's dope. Yeah, man. But you could do like... Contemporary, uh, jazz. Uh, I could do ballet. I'm not the greatest, but I my mom put me and my brother in ballet when we was like five. Bro, you are sexy, bro. (laughs) And you got the hair? Come on, man. It's nappy as fuck. I tried to lay my baby hair. During during COVID, Cruz was taking dance classes. He was like learning, uh, what was it? The uh, Megan the Stallion stuff. Bro? Nah, chill. Oh, Lord. You got good knees. <laughs> no, I respect it, bro. Yo, my fiance. My, I've been with my girl since uh, high school. Okay. So her little brother uh, moved to LA. He's a dope fucking dance. Oh yeah, nice. yeah. He's all contemporary. He's all ballet and shit like that. But like, uh, and he does like hip hop and shit. So like, I come from a level of like that shit is dope. Like I respect that yeah, shit. Man. I seen him compete and all that stuff. But uh, at what point did you think that was kind of like nah? Um. When I saw the average pay, uh, I realized mm-hmm. that wasn't what I wanted. <laughs> no, I'm playing. I love dancing, um, but the road to it, when I realized what it looked like, it was like, it just wasn't there. Like, it was something yeah. missing. I was good at it. I was a choreographer. Like, I can do all the shit I was willing to do. But at the same time, it was just like, all right, am I going to wake up 5 o'clock in the morning and go to the dance studio yeah. before everybody else get there so I can do Do you like it time? that much? Do I like it that much? Yeah. And I was like, it's not. That's it. Yeah. That's you know a good. I mean? That's a good way to look at it, man. So then, after that, I went to school. Went back to school. Um, got a degree in psychology. At, and oh, you are sexy, bro! <laughs> God damn, let's go, ladies. <laughs> I'm getting wet Don't for do you. That. Don't <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, oh, all right. That's dope. Psychology. Psychology. Then I thought about okay, if I get this and I get this going, am I gonna sit in somebody's office from eight to eight? Every day Right Monday yeah. to Friday Hell no Talking about their fucking problems bro It's like damn I don't Hell give a no. fuck About your fucking problems Yeah I don't That's a lot of weight You know what I mean I get it If you, if you <laughs> When you go into And you hear people's story Especially women If you yeah. hear people's story bro Like you think Your shit is bad When you hear other people's Like life stories You be like Oh I don't wanna do this no more This bro, is Nah for real though, That's, that's the thing wow. That's the thing Nobody talks about With psychology It's like yo You could be You could go to school for it, you could like it, you could be good at that, but when it comes to applying that for money or for work, Mm -hmm. you gotta be a people, not even a people person, you gotta like be willing to hear, bro, Bro, you have to turn into a robot. Yeah. You literally have to, to be a human to hear another human's problem, you're going to have an emotional reaction, right? Facts. So to do that on the regular and then to hear, like I'm telling you, I've heard some weird, I've heard some weird and crazy and wild stories. It's like, all right, you're being overdramatic. They'd be like, nah, he go to proof right here. I got the whole video. Damn. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> shit. It actually happened. You know what I mean? So like, and I did a lot, a lot of my studies 
truth be real, obviously through friendships and whatever, and then whatever I got to do at school. But mm-hmm. really, bro, it was at church. Mm. No. And people come to church hurt. Yeah. yeah and bro. like, bro, you gonna hear some shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, my daddy, I know y'all know him as Deacon, but you know, he did some things to me. What? Yeah. Yeah. No, he's true. still working. Why he still working? You know what I mean? Like, but you yeah. hear some shit, bro. That's, that's like a, that's say. almost a requirement. Yeah, bro. <laughs> and you got to be the person because, you know, you're supposed to be the <laughs> person you're fucking helping. God, what do you bro? say? <laughs> he said that's almost a requirement to be a deacon. <laughs> Bro, like, bro, he slipped that shit in so silently. No, you shouldn't have stopped it. He bro. said, <laughs> he said that. I was like, wait a minute, what the that. fuck he said? Zach, Zach was like looking back, and he goes, "What the fuck?" He couldn't hold it. But he's, anyways, keep going. Bro. Oh shit! But no, man, like you, you, you hear people's problems, bro. In order to be a human and to hear that shit over and over and over again, bro, you got to like turn something off. Yeah, and that shit turns into a robot, and I ain't like yeah. that. People I get desensitized that. like that, man. You have exactly. To. Mm-hmm. You ever watch porn too much and then got offered some yep. pussy? Yep. Yep. You was like, nah, I'll be all right. You know what <laughs> yep. That's why it's, imagination it's, prevails. Yeah, man. You got to be careful with that shit, man. So <laughs> yeah, that went for me. Yeah. No, but uh, that that's a fact. Like my girl went to school for social work. She graduated and said, "Fuck that." You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like uh, she. she she is built to be a social worker, right? Like, me mm. and her argue all the time because she is, like, she is the personality type of, like, an ad- advocate for the anything that <laughs> is not uh, at a, anything at a disadvantage she no, advocates yeah. for. She cannot fucking help it. Yeah. It's beautiful. And that's the type of person you need to be to be a social worker. Right. But at the same time, when you, she sees the field and shit, it's like... Hell no Nah it's That's true heavy, bro. And some people could just take it Like my girl bro She went to school For like a rad tech So she does like x-ray And shit like that Okay She'd be like Oh my god babe Guess what some guy Came in today He got his arm blown off And like I, he Yeah some a f- people love it And I'm yeah. like Damn that gotta, dude And she's like I gotta take his x-ray And I'm like Is he gonna make it <laughs> like, is, like is he good Oh yeah 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 He's fine They they, they stitched him up He lost his arm But he's you good I'm like point. I'm like damn <laughs> That man just lost his right arm. Yeah, no, but other than that, he's good, baby. He's good. Yo, they almost need to start. I went my you know, I'm always grateful. My first semester I went to Kansas to play football for one semester. Nice. What position? Uh linebacker. Ooh. Yeah. I was actually the same weight, but I was way more in, bro, I'm two hundred pounds, bro. I'm two hundred pounds. Let's go. But okay. I am so fat compared to what I was before. I, Not fat, but like I'm super out of shape. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to say he's about to say fat. I'm like, bitch, you better <laughs> you better check yourself. The fuck you talking about? He's fat. like, no, I can't even sit comfortably. <laughs> and you talking about fat right now? This For is real? I got like three, mother, <laughs> motherfucker. I got three fans on my ass. <laughs> and you talking about? No, I'm just playing. No, but facts though. <laughs> <laughs> that can't, we, we did the ghost was man. That's my fucking fans pushing out work in this bitch. All right, call it that. Y'all was talking about that voodoo bitch last <laughs> couple of months. She's still on y'all ass. That's what's going on. But but yeah, no, I. Played linebacker That shit was the best time ever bro Like That's one regret for me man Like when we're young bro Our mindsets are so different Like I was so ready to get on with life And didn't realize Like yo you will never play football ever again Bro They don't do pick up football Shit Right Football Careful now So Real quick Okay tell me I'm a football Like I grew up playing football Like Mm. To this day I still play football Not tackle no more Right Right, right, right. Two hand Uh, touch Like the You can go see my girl Be playing tackle now (laughs) Gosh (laughs) Zach is he's goofy today, <laughs> <laughs> but no, like it's, it's it's a real passion for mm-hmm. it, bro. So much so that I really was like, I'm mixed in the film. My dad was like, dude, you're six feet, 125 pounds. <laughs> you really think you're gonna make it to the NFL? Broke my heart, broke my heart, bro. But to this day, like you play linebacker, like I guarantee, and I mean this with all respect. Can't nobody guard me to this day. Yeah, you see how skinny I am. You played receiver, yes, sir. Yeah, bro, and you were five six foot. Yo, your dad was a dick, bro. Huh? Yo, I was five nine, one hundred ninety five. I was like a short stubby dude. My dad was like, "You're gonna fucking make it, dude." <laughs> that was the <laughs> you're like God, bro. My dad was like, "It ain't looking good for you or as a water boy. Like you ain't want to find some shit to do." Like but this. like that's the case for like I don't care who you are. Like that's the case for most people. You know yeah, what I mean? Bro. So it is a good thing to like put out there. But yeah. Damn It's a flag football league Shout out to Supreme Flag Football um, In Orlando Y'all know that Pros versus Joes thing That happened a few years ago Y'all know the team that beat the Pros The Joes that beat the Pros They're from The Supreme League Oh really They're from Orlando 
Oh, facts. And I play in that league. It's like a vibrant league, bro. It's like a hundred teams out there, bro. Like, check that out, bro. Yo, that check is, that out, bro. It keeps me in shape. It keeps me running. That's dope as fuck. And you get to compete. Mm-hmm. And, and against collegiate, like, ex-collegiate athletes and yo. former NFL players, bro. Like, it's there. They, I like shout that. Out Hell Antonio, yeah, man. bro. Like, yeah, because yeah, like, I, I, <clears throat> the only way I get that now is like playing pickup basketball. Because that shit gets yeah. competitive as you fuck. Do. So when you go to the right spot, too. That, yeah. that feeds me. You know what I mean? But, like, I can only be so good. Like, football, and that's the thing. Even, like, seven on seven, I'll play yeah. linebacker. You yeah. know what I mean? So, like, uh, I was always the quick one. So, like, I could have some fun. But, like, hitting and shit is, like, where you that's get where you your love bread. It. Yeah. And, like, being gritty and, and shit like that is, like, you don't get, like, that's where, like, people like me can find, like, a, a sport. You right. know what I mean? Right. Like, where, like, basketball and shit, it's like, you got to be finesse. Yeah. You got to be fast. Yeah. You got to be this and that. Versus, like, football, you need all that, too. But, like, if you're a fucking dog and you, like, putting your head into people's chest, there's a place for you There's here. a place for you. Yeah, bro. <laughs> if you're short and stubby, it's like, you be the best O-lineman or D-lineman. For real. You know what I mean? Like, they there are not... Go. See, not you play D line. I was D line. Are you saying D line, bro? <laughs> yeah, man. Like it's this is for you. This is for you, bro. That's anyway, shout out to football, man. I like shout that. But I like that. It gets pretty competitive playing ping pong too. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. Yeah. Like yeah, I got a sprain shin. <laughs> what? <laughs> my wrist hurts. My wrist. <laughs> my wrist. No, but what I was gonna say was they need for those programs. We were talking about psychology. Then you see it in the field. Social work. Then you see it in the field. Yeah. When I went out to Kansas, I thought I was gonna be a teacher. Like, I was like, yo, if I don't make it in football, I'm going to be a football coach. The only like, reason why he wanted like to be that. a teacher is because his fucking porn fantasies. No. That was, that was like, part of the reason. <laughs> only fans are thriving. Yo. You know that. In the classroom? Come on, bro. Bro, that would have been perfect. Fire. Especially in college nowadays, Especially man. You know, underage. You know all them students are in there. Yeah, man. Senior year. <laughs> Anyways, but... The first semester we got to do field experience. Mm-hmm. My first semester, bro, I will I'm so grateful for that. Like my first semester they sent me out to middle schools to do like mm. like field experience and it's it was so smart, bro, cuz you get to see at the beginning. Like I didn't I was going to go be a math teacher. Like I was like I like numbers, this and that. Mm-hmm. Fuck it. And then I went to the school. I had to go like twice a week for like that whole semester and I was like hell no, uh, bro. Yeah. I was like, no. He, he almost got arrested because he was cracked back in all the middle schools. <laughs> no. It's like, stay awake, bitch. Boom. No. <laughs> but I was like, hell no, bro. Like, this is not. But to the point where I was like, how much money am I going to make doing this? Yeah. You got to think about that. Yeah. People think that's a wrong thing. Like, if you got a passion for something and you don't care about the money, you still need to care about money. It's got to be like a high passion. It that ratio has got to be. It does, man. Like, like dance? Still, like, passion dance? don't pay the bills, bro. Passion don't, but it can. It can. Yeah, that is true. It definitely you can't. If if it takes if if the passion replaces happiness, yeah, right. Like mm. you know what I'm saying. Like if if like dance. Like my 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 girl's brother is a good example where like that passion and all that gives him all the happy happiness he needs where he doesn't right. need lavish lifestyle and right. it just needs to pay the bills. You yeah. know what I mean? But there's there becomes yeah. We were just literally resistance. talking about this a couple weeks ago about how like. How important it is to be able to have that finance on top on, on top of it. Have to man. because you can have all the passion in the world, but if you ain't paying your bills, you ain't gonna be happy, bro. Fact. You know what I mean. Even right. if you're doing what you need to do every day, but if you make a lot of money, you can still do your passion right. with the with the money that you make. You know what I mean. So right. you can have that balance with it still. And that goes back to what I was saying, bro. Like it was when I found out how to grind. It was nothing. I don't care. Yeah. If it was just us in the room, bro. Like I've done rooms in front of two people, and one of them was the promoter. And, like, I've done room, thank God, like, in front of 300, 400, 500, 600 people. You know what I mean? Like, I've yeah. been able to do this. I'd puke. Huh? I'd puke. First I, of all, the lighting, <laughs> you really don't even see everybody. Oh, okay. Right? You really I, don't. You have to overthink in yeah. order for you to be able to realize there's 500 people looking at you. Man, I'm an extrovert kind of type of person, I would say, for the most part, but I cannot do crowds, bro. Yeah. No nah, man. I'm no, that's a, that's a different. I don't think that's that's not foreign, bro. Like that's not foreign to nobody. Like it takes a it takes a separate skill, bro. Yeah. I would consider myself a good like public speaker, but like in business settings, meetings, mm-hmm. when I Fuck did that. when I did open mics, bro, that is also a different fucking thing, mm-hmm. bro. Mm-hmm. Like you like uh like trying to convince somebody of a business plan with all these facts and and shit like that is different than like I got to make you laugh tonight. Trying and- to tap into an emotion. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to make you single yeah. out one specific emotion right now. That's the one emotion. You know how many emotions we have as humans, right? You know what I mean. Yeah. Like, I'm going to tap into one emotion, and even if you're not feeling it, 
it's my job to turn it on. Yeah. That shit's hard. Yo, yeah. you, you, and I want to, <clears throat> I'm just going to go now. I talked about, uh, so Morgan was on, she went to school for marketing. I thought it was super dope because it's like, hey, like you do this comedy thing. You went mm-hmm. to school for marketing. Look how that's helping you even like that. That schooling helped you with your passion a little bit, which is super dope. Social media, all that shit. I think these days you need to do shit like that. Psychology is another one Mm -hmm. that I never thought about. Yeah, man. That's super dope because, like you said, you're a comedian. Like, not every stand up, uh, it's not just funny. Like, Mm -hmm. you, if you, if you hit different trigger points, it is funny. Right, but like. To, to dissect it and think about it like that, like, I got to try to make you feel this emotion yeah. and stuff and to, like, kind of understand a psyche or whatever. Man. It's a psychological warfare is what I call it, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm going in front of a crowd of people, right? And I got to be able to fight you in your mind to open up a specific part of you, right? Like, I've had people who sat through my whole shit stone-faced, mad, because I said something at the beginning either that triggered them or they didn't find funny and they just never gave me a chance. After that, yeah. After that. And then I... You know, sometimes I'll be able to, like, point them out. Mm-hmm. Well, you all right, brother? You okay? You look mad as shit. You know what I mean? And they be like, <laughs> oh, oh, me? Well, yeah, it's all right. It's going to be okay. All right. Either you got a shit or you got a gun on you. You ready to shoot everybody? You know what I'm saying? Like, and they be like, oh, ho, ho, ho. And they're like, oh, that's why you don't like to laugh because you laugh ugly. But it's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's little shit like that. You, It's psychological warfare. So if I can make the, the maddest or the most adamant person who's not going to laugh in the room laugh, I got everybody else. Yeah. It's warfare. Yeah, That's I like that. Fun. That's good, bro. That's fire. There, there's a fact to that. I, I watched. Uh, I went. You ever heard of Akash Singh? He okay. he's on what? Akash. <laughs> he's an Indian comic. Akash Singh. Okay. He's on Flagrant. I like said Akash Singh. <laughs> I was like, damn, Cruz. What the fuck are you anyway, watching online? But bro? there is just mind a, us in the false settlement, bro. I mean, there is a table. In I'm front getting canceled of him. for that. <laughs> it looked like a fucking biker gang, bro. Like bald. Beards mm-hmm. Like they were Stone cold Just sitting there And it's like He went right for him mm-hmm. And it worked mm-hmm. to, to that same effect That you're talking about yeah, Where it's man. like Yo if he's giving them shit You know what I mean yeah, And he's like bro. joking He's like ragging them In front Everybody was laughing You have alpha males bro Yeah You have alpha males And alpha females Too Right eh. Which we call <laughs> I'm just fucking <laughs> with you Damn it, No cause I think Brittany Griner Come in here And swing on all of us That's true That's If true. she needed to That's facts like it, but they, she has some reach. Though. But that's she got true. some reach. I'm tagging them shins. I'm gonna be I honest. Them shins don't work if you really trigger them. But nobody tried them. Emphasis on the male on that alpha. Yeah. Well, <laughs> her shoulder stronger than mine. You know what I mean? Yeah, God damn. No, I'll still hit. No, I'm saying is <laughs> easy. <laughs> there's there's this is personality type that I learned in psychology where there's just people who are just chill. They relax. They can play the setting. There's a certain people who just want to give. They just want to give uh-huh. because they just want everybody to feel comfortable so they don't have to worry about anything. And you got this other people who just, I'm going to walk in here and y'all better adjust to me or you're going to feel me. Yeah. Like there's different personality types. Yeah. Once you it. get, and the alpha is the one who's just like, I'm here. Uh-huh. You don't like it, you can leave. Yeah. yeah. Or do something about it. Like type shit. Yeah. And they don't mean, some of them don't even mean harm by it. They just, that's just who they are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when you, when you match them on that, they fuck with you heavy. Yeah. I've had a biker gang fuck with me, and they weren't laughing at nobody. It was mad. They started drinking a little bit extra, yeah. and they got more mad. And like it was, and then when I started talking, they weren't laughing at none of my jokes. And then, like, halfway through, I realized it. Like, you know, I seen somebody with a cut-off shirt, and I'm like, so you got a, what you got, a Marley? Or what is it called? A, bar, a Marley? Harley? Harley. They Harley. cousins. Uh, they cousins. Um, <laughs> Harley and Marley. <laughs> I was like, you got a Harley or a Mongoose? Or some shit like that, I said, and... He was like, wait, what? And he got like aggressive. Just matched his energy. Hold on now. Don't, don't shit yourself. All right. Yeah. I'm skinny as motherfucker, but I'll stab your ass. Or I'll shoot you or call the police. <laughs> my mama, somebody. I call the police my mama. <laughs> he couldn't. He was like, okay, you know who. You you respect who I am, but you're yeah. also like acknowledging it in a certain way. That, yeah. Bro, it's all psychological warfare, bro. Yeah, bro. It's yeah. all that's all it is. Because like, as, while one, per, one personality might see it as intimidating, it's like, that's not really what it is. Like, it's not like he's mm-hmm. really trying to beat your ass. Right. It's just, that's how he that's presents how he himself. Pre- yeah. That's, and or, once you break him. Or how he bees. Everybody else breaks in the room. In the room. Hell yeah. yeah. Everybody Hell else yeah. follows suit because they was worried about this nigga a long time ago before you got on stage. They saw him come in. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Look at him. He's over there. And like, after a while... You break them and they start laughing. Everybody be like, oh. <laughs> like, yep. it, it makes everybody else relax. Yep. You, talk, you talked about like uh, 
doing like bad shows, good shows, this mm-hmm. and that. Like obviously that's what you got to do if you're working as a comic and mm-hmm. shit like that. How? What do you think about uh, what is it? Bitters and bottles. Bitters and bottles. How do you think about that set? I've done that one before, and that's why I ask because it's like. How so, do you feel about it? I don't know. Like I think I was really spoiled with brews and blues because mm-hmm. it's stage. The, the way everybody's sitting and shit like that, the environment, especially if you got a host like Kevin or something yeah, like man. that. But, like, the bitters and bottles is, like, you're right next to the bar mm-hmm. talking. So, like, some people, you know, like, are really just trying to be at the bar or whatever. Yeah. And then the the people are, like, it's, like, narrow. It's, yeah. like, you're talking out. You know what I mean? Right. So, how do you feel about that one? So, I just actually did them Friday. Um, it's a different type of room. Yeah. Um, it is like the narrow. It's just a weird setup, right? Weird setup. Like it is a bar, yeah, with food straight up. The restaurant is next door, but this Fire is literally restaurant. like a bar. They got like seven seats outside of the bar, bro. So I say that to say like it's not set up for comedy. No, there's no stage. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. They move the mic from one side to the other. It can become intimidating because it doesn't make sense comedically. But then comedically, it's like okay, you have to just. Like, we always have to do. Yep. Okay, fuck it. Y'all gonna talk at the bar and y'all right next to me? Like, let's talk. Let's talk. Yeah. Let's talk. I don't have to tell this joke. Y'all not paying attention anyway. So now I'm gonna fuck with you because I got a microphone. Yep. Matching their energy. And people now, all of a sudden, you just called me out. So now I'm paying attention. And then when they're like nervous, then you can hit your jokes. Then joke. you can hit your jokes. Then you can start having fun when they're like, oh my gosh, he's actually cool. Yo, yeah. that's fire, bro. You do. That's you have good. to adjust to the room. Shout out yeah. Vince Taylor. Vince Taylor had a room, a, no, a night lounge, right? So we know how this was narrow, right? Bitters and Bottles was narrow and it's skinny. Uh, yeah. Dreams Lounge in Longwood or Maitland, whatever, it's like super wide and it's short. Mm. Oh, yeah. Right. Uh-huh. So, and then it's a black room. And you know, it takes a lot for a Negro to laugh because <laughs> yeah. we just high standard in entertainment in general shit, right? So you got a black room and it's weird set up. You can't sit there and be like, well, I'm going to tell my jokes and I'm going to see if it, like, it, you have to adjust. Just let me run through it. Yeah, you have to adjust. You yeah. have to adjust to the room you're talking to. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everybody's not the same. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, you yeah. might laugh at shit that he don't laugh at, but then he might laugh at shit that neither one of us laugh at. But then we all may laugh at some shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to yeah, figure man. it out. And you got five minutes to do it. Yeah. So instead of me trying to get a joke off, let's, let's, let's talk. I wonder, too, like, I wonder, what do you think about comics that have good crowd work? Do you think that is a product of doing a bunch of rooms? Because there's a, you, I'm, have you seen a lot of comics that are mm-hmm. just punchline, 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 mm-hmm. punchline, right? Like, I think Frankie's fire, right? Mm-hmm. But he's a punchline guy. Yep. But he also curates his shows. Like, he doesn't just perform anywhere, I don't think. Right. Like, it's, from when I've talked to him, he'll do open mics where the, where it's right, right? Like, we saw him at Bruising Blues. Like, if right. Kevin's hosting, if the room looks good, or I'm putting the show together, and yeah. I know what the environment's going to be, and I'm going to hit my shit. And, yeah. and it works there. It's perfect like that. Mm-hmm. But... Like you said, like with the weird rooms, you know what I mean? Whether it's bitters and bottles or the place in Maitland or whatever, you know what I mean? It's yeah, like yeah. you got to have crowd work, bro. Because if you try to power through your jokes and like places, do you think crowd work is a product of uh, working in different rooms or do you think some people just. I think it's part of comedy, bro. I really hate and I love and I respect every comedian. Yeah. Whether you're great or whether you never got anywhere with it, but you tried it. Like anybody, right? I respect it so much. That I respect anybody who hopped on stage and did it. My thing is, crowd work is part of comedy. Yeah. Um, somebody told you it was funny enough to the point where you believe you can hop on stage. Don't sacrifice that person or persona trying to remember a punchline. Because now people are going to peep you. People are very smart subconsciously. Yeah. We're all smart subconsciously. So people are going to peep. Mm, he's trying to remember something. And they don't say it. You're judging. And you're judging yeah. automatically. But if you're just out there feeling people and you're talking to them and, you, and you're, you're, you're adjusting to what's going on. Matt Rife, I didn't even know about until about two months ago. I seen him here and there, but I didn't know his name. Just like, okay, this is a handsome dude doing comedy. Yep. All right, cool. The motherfucker is famous, not for his jokes. But because he, he's witty and he's, uh-huh. and he's very fast because he knows how to talk to people. And mm-hmm. he knows to listen to people. He knows how to listen to people. He can just draw these things. It's part of comedy. Like, you were funny in a room before. Yeah. And, some, and you had people crying, laughing, and you were just like, and somebody was like, yo, you should step on stage and do this. And then 
People be like, oh yeah, I should, I should, and they let that whole part of them go, and they try to write jokes, jokes. and stick to it. That's a great mm. point, bro. You're writing a joke, and you forgot all about the persona. Like why that somebody made said people that, cry laughing and yeah. said that you need to be on. They didn't say that you didn't write those jokes. You was just being funny. You was being you in a certain version of you, and you had the room crying laughing. And then when somebody says step on stage because of the respect, same thing I went through. That's why I can yeah. speak about it. I didn't. I respected it so much that I thought. Damn, I got to put pen to paper and I got to do and I got to present. No. Motherfucker, you funny. Bro, that's so be true. funny in front of these people now. That's facts though. Because yeah, the just jokes, uh, that shit only like that it it's per it's amazing that you pointed that out. Cause when you if you think about it, the just jokes or the set only works when you are at a different upper mm-hmm. echelon where you can't you you have such a crowd that you can't do crowd work, right? Yeah, right. And that is one the top one percent, right? That's the of Chris comedy. Rock's, Kevin Hart's, Dave Chappelle's, yeah. and so, even Steve. right ninety nine, and they have crazy crowd work. That's why mm-hmm. they are where they are because ninety nine percent of comedy mm-hmm. you need to have good. Crowd. It's fun. That's true. Like Matt Rife, Andrew Scholes. I fuck with Andrew yeah, Scholes. There's man. a mad dudes. All the clips that I fuck with right now is all crowd work. It's yeah. the funniest shit, bro. and I feel like crowd work. Trends more Than like yeah. regular jokes Because people want to be A part of the, the show yeah. yeah When you bring the crowd Into the show Oh they feel like they're Yeah f- And that's why you got people Who heckle mm-hmm. Right And they don't know they're heckling But they're just so excited They got to say some shit You know what I mean Like It's, 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 it's that But honestly bro. though What would a comedy be Without any hecklers though No Hecklers suck I don't they know suck but you need them Exactly yeah, that's what I was going to say need You need them Because like the asshole football coach He's yeah. a DB coach But you cussing me out I ain't even in your group you know what I mean? I do special teams. Why are you cussing me out? Yeah, because you soft. All right. Yeah. Well, Coach Gabe, I, I didn't know you thought about me like that. I didn't even meet you before. It's the first yeah. time you spoke to me. He said, you, but you need that because now you know somebody watching you that you never thought was watching. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah. But there is a fine line because I went to. There are assholes. I've, I've, yeah. been a, I've been a fan of Andrew Schultz for a long time. And I went to mm-hmm. one of his shows. Like, I think it was like 2017, 2018. It was in Miami mm-hmm. and it was called the Comedy Inn. Okay, and it's a small room, bro. And you drive in, and you're literally like, "Fam, am I pulling into a hotel?" <laughs> and it's a hotel. It's a little room in a hotel, like fifty seater. In my, it might be a, like a thirty seater, bro. Like it was very small. Yeah. And he was doing it, and he was great. Like, and his crowd work was kind of like, "Am I the only one that walked in here and said, am, is this a fucking hotel? Like, am I about to get killed in the back here or whatever?'" <laughs> but there's a dude that was just kind of being obnoxious. Like, if it's an obnoxious heckler, yeah, right? no, of course, he, he was just like. Get the fuck out! Like get them. Out. Everybody started applauding and shit mm-hmm. like that. Like th- those, are, but like the white lady or whatever. That's like no. That's mm-hmm. the heckler you need for crowd work. You know what I mean, or yeah. something like that. It's still the comedic. I've always held every comment to this. Shout out to my boy Cam. Me and Cam used to talk about this all the time. It is our responsibility to control the show. Mm. You have the mic. Yeah. So I don't care if it's some swole. Six nine, two hundred eighty pound dude who's just pissy drunk and he's cussing and saying a whole bunch of outlandish shit, or if it's a small skinny white lady who, who acting like a Karen but she's sensitive because you said something about her group, right? And all you got to do is really make that right. Is is your job as a comedian or as a person on stage with a microphone to control the stage? You're the show. If you let somebody overtake your show, you lost. Yeah, we competitive. Yeah, we're not gonna play that shit, right? But then there's a way to handle it. I'm not gonna cuss you out. And ruin the show and make you feel like you like you didn't defeat me. It's my show. Whether it's for five minutes, fifteen, an hour, whatever case may be, fuck all that. I'm gonna control this shit. And whether you wanna keep talking with me, I'll make you part of the show. And either I'm gonna roast you, I kick you out if you're just there's nothing there and you're just being outlandish, or I found something and like, yo, we can interact and I can make you my friend. Yeah. It's our job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't care who's talking. Yeah. I wish Obama would help with me. <laughs> I love Obama, but I wish he would. I'll get his ass. I'll fire his ass up. <laughs> oh, bitch, now you want to talk to me. You six packs in the cigarettes today. But you want to- <laughs> Purple ass. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> you, know? you got the cigarettes yeah. or the blunts. Everybody was like, he used to smoke blunts. I was like, I'm voting for him smoke now. Pokes. <laughs> pokes. Pokes. <laughs> pokes. Uh, you, I like, I like how you talk about this. Because it's kind of interesting. It's funny, right? We have like four different comics on. Mm-hmm. Different, different conversations, different like perspectives on it. Mm-hmm. All, all do good in their own respects or whatever, right? You have it's been like f- what four, four years now. You've been doing it three, 
three years? 2020, minus, minus that little COVID period. Right, right, right. Yeah. So uh, you were saying, because we were, I'm trying to get back to like how you started, right? Then you did the two shows, COVID, then you did the one show with the drop off, and then you had your boom, boom, 15 minutes, 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. That's your one, two, three, four. Mm hmm. Five. What was the show five looking like? That was show five. Was the second or show six? Or so, Vinny Beetle, Scumbag Vinny, introduced me to one of honestly one of my closest friends now. Uh, this dude named Justin Silva. Um, if you watch TikTok or you watch Instagram, it's the blue haired dude who I was picking at his girl, mm-hmm. soon to be wife. Like fucking hilarious. Introduced me to him. Justin moved to Florida, then moved to Orlando. Blew up. I already met him. We hung out. Whatever. He blows up And now Vinny makes he Obviously Like yo This dude just Went from 10,000 followers yeah. To 200 Or 300 So Vinny Makes a showcase Out of this 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 Social media guy I got to travel with them I've been to Atlanta Miami Tampa um, You know what I mean Like we've been able to do shows That was after The the. 15, this is 15? like show 5 6 wow. 7 You eight, start doing nine, that 9 10 Yeah man So like I my I did Atlanta and Tampa my first year, bro. Wow, bro. Yeah, man. And Miami. Miami too. I did not know about open mics. I knew what an open mic was and it makes sense, but I didn't know there was comedic open mic. I didn't know nothing about where they were. Now and uh and do you feel like that, that that was because of the time you started, maybe it was like easier to wiggle your way in for that? Or do you feel like it was just like you just got linked up with the right people at the right bro, time? It was a, like I said, I don't believe in coincidences, bro. I the guy who introduced me to comedy took me to open mics. COVID happens the next week or, you know, yep. within those that weeks. And you were in the lab for three months. And in, or in a lab, three. bro. Yeah. And wake up in the morning and watch these mansion videos of shit I want. You know what I mean? Like these mansions in L.A. and Miami and watch this shit. And then after that, I turn on comedy. This is how I write. I don't put pen and paper. Then I turn on comedy. And I watch the greats. Then I go in the garage, roll up. Cause I ain't got shit to do. They ain't like I got to work, thinking. and I'm still getting paid <laughs> with these yeah. fifteen hundred dollar furlough checks. You know yeah, what I mean? So yeah. I go, I roll up, I go in my own little space, and I just act the fool where nobody can see me, and I'm free to do it. And I was in the fucking lab, bro. That's a dope process. That's a nice little creative process. And it was that's different, bro. It's different, bro. That's different really than what different. we've like. Everybody got their own little creative process mm-hmm. that they kind of miss and they go through. That's mm-hmm. kind of interesting. It's like let me get some perspective. Let me get some perspective. Let yeah. me go get high. Side. Let me go isolate. Yeah, and open my mind up. It's your own thing, bro. That's the thing I love about comedy. Can't nobody tell you how to be your funny. Yeah, yeah. There's no structure to it though. That's right. the scary part. So motherfuckers start copying other people or they do other things. It's just like yo, be the motherfucker who. Made the whole room laugh in the cafeteria, and they was like, "Yo, you're fucking stupid." It's like there's a formula, but it's a broad formula. It's a broad formula. Yeah. You got to figure out who you are and all that. Because yeah, yeah, you're inspired, but you got to figure out who you are. Yeah, and I think <clears throat> like because we are like it's super impressive and it's super interesting how like literally your third, fourth, fifth show, and then you're like doing all these, the you know like doing what you're doing, mm-hmm. but also like technically. You were able to be in the lab for like three months yeah. with a focus. Like you got the you mm-hmm. got the bite, you got the irk, and then you got shut down. You got shut and down. then you got to be in the lab for a little bit. That's kind of uh you didn't have to be in the lab, right? Like you could have been like, Oh well, I tried that, that shit's yeah. going to hell, COVID's coming, so yeah. I'm gonna play video games and shit. I'm getting paid. You know what I mean? And so, I love video games, bro. I don't even play video games no more. Yeah. Focus. That's that that's how you know you like what you're doing. Everything. Yeah, man. Like you was talking about, like, am I going to show up early to the studio to do my thing and then also do all these things with dancing? It's like comedy wasn't even a thought. It wasn't it's like, thought, yo, shit, bro. I don't play video games no more. That's yeah. crazy. You had to look back and be like, oh, shit, I didn't pick up these. The, the sticks had yeah. dust on them and ash and shit. You know what I mean? Just Hell like, damn, yeah. I haven't really played Madden in a minute. You know what I mean? So, Damn, bro. It was different. How was that traveling? Where you feel like, like, was it just fun? Like, what was the money like, though? Was it all for experience for sure, right? So... It was all for experience for me. Mm-hmm. That's why I say respect the Vinny. Yeah. Right? He couldn't always produce what he said he was going to produce. Right? But I'm a baby in this. Yep. The fact that you invited me to Atlanta. Shit, I got family in Atlanta. Grateful. You invited me to Atlanta, and then you're talking about 30 minutes? Bitch, I've only been doing this for 60. Wait. Six months. He was giving you 30 minutes? When we went to Atlanta, I did a 30 minute set. God. That was October. Remember, I started in March of that same year. 
And then luckily you had those back to back shows with those fifteen minutes and shit like that. Damn, Damn bro, minutes, that's so. a long time, bro. But to me, bro, it's this is when you know you love something when you look up and they be like, "Hey, man, it's been thirty minutes. I I ain't even get done with the second joke." Yeah, I just yeah. been flowing. Yeah, yeah, it's time for you to get off stage. I suck at lights. Forgive me, every comic who's ever had a room and I ran your light. It's not that I'm trying to. I literally lose track on stage. Especially if I zone, if I'm zoned in, I I did an hour. Me and Justin did a show. Justin did a show. He had me as his feature. It was just me and him. Two and a half hour show. God damn. Just me and him. I did an hour. He did an hour and I think fifteen. They lit me and I was like, all right, cool. I just did. They I set for thirty minutes. He lit me. I'm thinking, okay, damn. I probably did thirty five forty. Yeah. Kareel, my homeboy, also my media guy, was just like, bro, you just did an hour. I just recorded an hour of you. You're enjoying yourself up there. Bro, I zoned out, bro. Yo, that's that's so <clears throat> damn, that's that's interesting, bro. That's a dope way to look at it. Cause man, that's cool. Cause some some people starting out, right? Mm-hmm. If anybody's listening starting out, that could be perceived as uh oh, I was too nervous and mm-hmm. I didn't know. But it's also like, no, if you're really, really nervous, like if you're really shitting bricks, um mm-hmm. You you think five minutes feels like an hour, yeah, and you can't wait to get you you yeah. you you're thinking perception is crazy. You're stopping. Oh my perception god, perception is even, crazy, bro. Yeah, you ever like looked in the mirror and had a weird lighting and be like, oh shit, I look like a zombie. Like I ain't as cute as I thought and I then was. Some lightings, you take your shirt off and, and you're, you're like, like, shit. Yeah, you know what I mean. That I used had to have a line, You know what I mean? Like, yeah, who bro. did my lineup? That you is know? that's What's a draw bro. <laughs> Zach. <laughs> He's gonna wait till the end, bro. <laughs> wow, no, yeah, that, that's interesting, man. Because I, it's funny. Like the couple times I went on, it was the same, mm-hmm. and I always was kind of like, "Damn, am I so nervous?" Like this and that. But it's like, is I, that's a better problem than getting stuck at minute three or something like that. Something I learned in psychology. Yeah, right. I took. I had to take a neuropsychology class. They would tell us symptoms and what happens in the brain and how your body reacts and the chemicals, the neurotransmitters, and all the shit they release. Right. Hell yeah. The thing that stuck out to me the most was the same neurotransmitters that are released, like the dopamine, the yep. same set of transmitters and the same way they are set out, like the way they are adjusted, is the same way for nervousness as it is for excitement. That's the same ner- That's the same feelings. Stomach. you anxious. Really? You kind of twitch sometimes. Same Some chemical twitch. reaction. It's the same chemical reaction. It's your job to perceive it as, am I nervous or do I care so much that I'm excited? Uh. And then shit changes. It changes completely. I've been nervous on stage before and suck ass. You know me. I'm energetic. Yeah. Y'all see me right now. You know what I mean? Like I'm energetic, especially more on stage. Yeah. But there's times where I psyched myself out and was up there trying to be a stand-up comedian instead of just being a comedian. And I, I just it was like, no, nah, that's not me. But it was the same nerves every single time. Every single time. Every single, just, how are you perceiving ones. this? You have to just change your perspective. If I'm perceiving 300 people going to intimidate me, they're going to intimidate you. Yo. But if I look at 300 people like, y'all came to see me. Y'all came to see somebody make you laugh. I'm going to make you laugh. That's why I was hired to do this. And somebody hired me because they trusted me. Yeah. The 300 people now, they in their draws. You know what I mean? They naked. Yeah. Beneath you. you know, what I'm not, not beneath you, but you know what I mean? Like, they're to you. They're... they're, they're, they're Connected to you, they're under you at this point because, goddamn it, you on stage, you have a microphone. They're looking at you. Silence doesn't mean they're not paying attention. They hate you. Silence means they're paying attention. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bro. Control it, bro. That's fire, bro. Yeah. Yo, the power perspective. That is fire, bro. Because you know what? You know how true that is, bro. You know how that shit. That shit applies everywhere, everywhere. bro. Yo, school. I know so many people that were so prepared for a mm-hmm. test. But they were so nervous. Mm-hmm. And some people, like, I would prepare too, but I would perceive it as, like, let's go. Yeah. Like, I'd be nervous, but I'm like, fuck that's shit. right. I'm about to fuck this shit yep. up. Like, let's get it. But it would break some people. Like, literally, they would psych themselves out before yep. an exam, and they are so prepared. Mm-hmm. And that psyching themselves out fucked them up. Fuck them In up. business, you are the most subject matter expert on whatever this meeting's on. Mm-hmm. But because you're so nervous for this meeting... And you psych yourself mm-hmm. out, you fumbled everything. And people perceive every bit. They feel it. We're empathetic creatures, bro. We're going to feel that shit. You and you can't, I mean? even per- you can't even take it the same way if, it, if that's the case. You're a linebacker, right? Yeah. 
You know who the most nervous football linebacker of all time? Ray Lewis. Thank you. Uh, I didn't have to say nothing. Uh, was nervous, bro. The same symptom, but the motherfucker demanded, demanded it to be. I pulled it. <laughs> yeah. demand, no. Wait for real though. What was that? that he I farted, it bro. I think it was nah, your point. Nah. Leave it. <laughs> nah, <laughs> y'all be left. Left. This man cutting cheese. No, that's perfect. No, if I fart, it stink before I fart. Like it's, <laughs> it warns you. Hey, y'all might want to get the fuck out. <laughs> Tickle your nose. Yo, if you do that, we competing. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a challenge. But no, that's fact, bro. Finish. Yeah, man. You know who's even Listen like, how he talks, bro. Listen how... Go watch a Ray Lewis speech and listen to his voice shake. We out here and we supposed to be soldiers. Yeah. We supposed to be soldiers. And we gonna do this thing and we gonna... Do, you're if nerd, he didn't, you're have the same symptoms I got. Yeah. But you're command, You're taking control over the shit. You're it's doing all it perspectives, different. bro. You say that's those same words, but like... We out here and we soldiers. Yeah. Like, that person's scared. Yeah. Right, yeah. yo, uh, Brian Dawkins is another example. Brian that Dawkins, went crazy. bro, crazy. Jacksonville, Florida. Shout out Duval County. Oh, really? Yes, sir. Oh my gosh, shout, shout out Brains High School. Duval, Rains High School. Let's shout go. out to my mom. She went to the same school. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, yeah. that's a good. That's they a shoot good. first and ask questions later. <laughs> <laughs> pow, pow! You suspended. <laughs> what? The principal shot me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Duval that's County. crazy, bro. That's a. That's a good. That's. That's fire, man. I'm going to use that. I like that. Do it, bro. Hell yeah, You man. can do it. When they tell us, bro, like, we can do anything, bro. We can do anything. It's all your perspective. Yep. That's true, it's bro. It's all your perspectives. Yeah, we was talking about... We, we had an interview a couple weeks ago with a blind dude, bro. We had a couple couple perspectives. ASF Vision. He, do, he lives his full fucking life, bro. So, like, okay. he does... Uh, he plays the guitar. He's he number one judo for Paralympics. Yeah, man. He's a skateboarder. He's number one judo as blind. Okay, but, Paralymp- yeah. but he's Paralympics. Yeah, yeah, for Paralympics in the United States, and then he's a uh, skateboarder. Fucking oh, this nigga daredevil. But point is, is yeah, what, yeah that's what I said. That's <laughs> but what he's nice I, with it too, bro. Yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah. But point was, is like we see the blind man, like you know what I mean, like, like pity. Uh, that's life. Life's done, bro. But mm-hmm. then he kind of goes like, "Yo, I got my legs," mm-hmm. you know, and it's kind of like, "Yeah, Damn, bro." Like that yeah, shit hits a little. He's living bit. life more than most people are. He's achieving more but in life than ob- most people are. I want to say too, with that though, that's the obvious perspective situation. What we just talked about is not so obvious when it comes yeah. to perspective. I, I just want to say that, like, with your emotions and then, like, perceiving them differently mm-hmm. as your emotions are coming up. That is not the most obvious to most people. Look back on what you've experienced in your life and then contemplate that and then ask that question again, right? I don't know about y'all. I'm not retarded, but I went to school and for some reason they kept putting me in the ESC classes. Like, I'm <laughs> acing the fuck out of these tests. I don't even know. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? But, like, I said this to say, like, <laughs> dancing before being LGBTQ was, quote, unquote, a trend and a cool and we got to support them. Instead of just treating these people like dancing, introducing me to that in the nineties. Yep. Autistic kids. Everybody think, oh, we should feel bad for autistic. Those motherfuckers are smart as Not fuck. Not only are they smart as fuck, they'll beat your ass. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Got big dicks, all types of shit, yeah. of superpowers. But because you perceive them to be different, you feel pity for them. In other words, they yeah. really have superpowers. Yeah. Yeah. These are some smart. Them strong, smart as fuck, strong, bro. big, big dick, dick motherfuckers. Yeah. yeah, bro. Yo, that's funny, bro. That's true. It's real shit, bro. It's I know real two shit. autistic dudes, bro. Smart as shit. Both, both slanging. Slanging. Did you see that video of the kid? And they were just like, "Oh, find me uh, forty-two. I don't know, remember the address. Forty-two Wallaby Way, Sydney." And the kid, obviously, he didn't go to that specific address, but it was like some random place in like Montana, right, or somewhere in like Europe. He would just. You say such and such, okay. Such, 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 such. All right, and he goes on like the world map, yeah, the Google thing where you can zoom in from the from the globe mm. and find the specific address off of what you just said. Mm. Yeah. The fuck? Well, I mean, even like Rain Man, right? The movie Rain Man, autistic, mm. smartest motherfucker. All those little clips that you see where somebody's like, "What's?" And they got the calculator mm-hmm. and they're asking him. That kid's always autistic, mm-hmm. bro. Like he's always kind of like you. You can tell he's not the most socially like good. Dude or whatever And it's like Yeah man they're Smart motherfuckers But yeah. nobody talks yeah, about bro. The big dicks That is a fact No big dicks is that It's like unanimous Yeah I don't know I don't I, know how I get that I don't know <laughs> <laughs> You got some autism bro huh? so I think I'm Like listen I really <laughs> think Government should be Giving me a check every month I'm <laughs> slow as shit uh, 
<laughs> nah, bro. Okay, so doing those shows and shit like that. You're active right now, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, was Trying that was, was that kind of like? One of your bigger highlights. Is there any other highlights you want to get to? Because I want to get to what you're trying to do. Because I, because okay. I know I saw. Uh, what's your boy? Cam Patterson. No, Some, Justin Silva, the DJ. Viral the DJ. Viral the DJ. That's big bro. Big bro, that's my brother. Because I saw you guys did some shows and stuff like that, and you yeah, kind of mentioned that's something you kind of were trying to do with the comedy scene, yeah, and that's what man. I want to talk about. Because I also respect what Frankie does. Yes. I really like Shut that shit, Frank. man. Like when he when we were talking to him, he was kind of like he doesn't like doing open mics and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know, everybody's got their own shit that they prefer, or whatever. But I think it's kind of dope when he puts it in his own hands and does shit like Absolutely. that or whatever. What 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 did you guys put on some shows? Mm-hmm. What are you trying to do? Quick background to sum up. Yeah, where it was. Got thirty forty five minutes in my first year. Nobody's going to believe that shit. In fact, it's disrespectful to tell a 10-year veteran comedian. If they ask you, yo, how much time can you do? They expecting 5, 10, and you tell them you got 45. They're going to take it as disrespect. Oh, this arrogant motherfucker. I'm trying to compete with you, bitch. I got 45 minutes. Yeah. You I'm not I mean? trying to be up there if I don't you didn't have hear 45 my story. minutes. Yeah. yeah. So you have to be however much you need or, you know what I'm saying? I got a tight. I, I, don't, I, I don't lie. I don't bullshit. Right? So long story short. To go tell somebody you're one year in the comedy, you got 45 minutes of at least decent material. Obviously, I don't need to do 45 minutes. I need yeah. to develop into that. Who the fuck is going to give me 30 minutes or 25 minutes or 45 minutes or an hour? You can just keep getting five minutes. You're going to get five minutes. and ten minutes, bitch, yeah. and they're going to slow you down, right? And the best thing, the con, the con of being in Orlando comedy or just in Florida comedy is that we don't have the New York, L.A., Austin, Texas scene. We got the talent. But we don't have the opportunities in the scene. Yeah. But that being said. What do you mean by that, though? Like doing a bunch of those types of sets? Where you go to open mic and there's more than two people in the room. Right. But, and, and why do you right, think right, that right, is? Right, right, this right. week. And why right. do you think that is? I don't think this city or this state or they just. It's not condensed enough. It's not that. It's a lot of motherfuckers that moved here. Shout out New York. Yeah. It's a, <laughs> it's a lot of motherfuckers that live here. And they will show up. You got to sell people for some reason in Orlando and in Florida in general, you had to sell people on what you're telling them to come pay for. Do you think there's just so much to do here that people are like, why am I going to do that? There's so much to do here. Nobody knows Florida as a com- comedy state. And you said Austin, where I think they're in the same zone as us. If Rogan didn't do all- like, that's a different right. scene out there now, but then they have a certain support system. Like Floridians don't need comedy. Yeah. We don't need entertainment. Yep. We got, Tourism. We got beaches. You got we got mad good tax, shit to do. Yep. Tax like rates. Zach said. Yep. Like we we don't have no state tax. It's cheap to live out here. It's fun to live out here. It's a good weather. It's hot as shit right now. But it's good weather. God. You know what I mean? Like when December comes, we're gonna be chilling. Like it's the perfect place to live. However, in certain areas, including entertainment, it's not as much opportunity because that's not it's so much to do. I can go to Disney World, I can go to Universe, I can go to SeaWorld, I can go downtown and party, and you ask me to come to a comedy show and spend twenty five dollars. And I gotta pay for food and drinks. Yeah. To see some comics. I don't even know. Yeah. So I'm trusting you with my twenty five dollars to make me laugh. But that motherfucker Matt Wright sold everything out over here. Because this I know. Mother, well, yeah, yeah, he I built know. That's a bad that. motherfucker first. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. But he you also been in the game it. 10, yeah, yeah. 11, 15 years. But you know we're what talking no, about that's what I'm saying. We're though. talking about working out. We're talking about us, bro. Like it's yeah. us. So we want to go work out some material. Well, I'm not gonna pay. Even if it's free, well, I don't want to go in here because if the first three comics suck and yeah. I'm not even here for comedy, I came to watch the game and get me a drink. And you you had the first three guys suck, I don't really want to be here no more. It's awkward. That's true. That and is, people don't understand. They don't have the love and the passion for comedy like New York, Atlanta, Austin, Texas, yep. L.A. You know what I mean? They don't have that um, type of passion for it. Washington, D.C. So it's hard to get people into a room, which makes it discouraging for the, for the comedians because, shit, I'm tired of doing this joke in front of the same two people or in two people because I can't really get a gauge. Yeah, you're not really testing shit out. Right. There's not even the com- the, the promoters in the room. You're just sometimes. practicing. Yeah, yeah, you're practicing. You're trying to get yourself confident. But that's it. And yeah. you're, Exactly. So then it's not many opportunities. And then you find out, like, it's, it's, it's this fine line between trying to work on material and just like, all right, I'm developing. Whether it's two people in the room, 200 people in the room. It's rooms that'll fill up. You have to navigate, you have to figure out those rooms. But once you get inside of a 300-person room a couple of times and you made them laugh, you got house laughs, 
keep building. I'm not going to do the same 5, 10, 15 minutes for 15 years. So with that being said, having 45 minutes, ain't nobody going to respect the one-year comedian talking about he got 45 minutes. You sound mm-hmm. foolish. You sound stupid. Yeah. Okay. Well, if ain't nobody else going to do it, shout out to my mom, Lenita. My mom was like, son, if I feel like you got a lot of time and yet you're only doing 10, 15 minutes and I'm paying $25. You know, I always support you. Why don't you just do a show here in Jacksonville, my home city. I'll find somebody, this, this, and this, and you do your own show. And I did my own show. This is how I was going to work on my 30 minutes, my 45 minutes hour, because nobody else was going to give it to me. Vinny Beetle and Justin and I kind of like parted way. Well, Justin and I didn't, but like, you know, yeah, yeah. It, it broke up. Yeah. So nobody else is giving me 15, 30 minutes no more. It's still five minutes. Now I got to learn how to do now a five-minute set. fighting for it. I got to yeah. learn how to do a five-minute set now. Yeah. You're supposed to learn how to do a five-minute first. Then you, you were used to slow minutes. rolling and juicing and crap. Right, yeah, bro. No. But I need this opportunity, bro. I got 30 minutes on me at least. But who going to give it to me? Shit, I'll do it. And that's what she brought up to me. It was like, all right, let's do a show here. We'll do that. Did my first show in Jacksonville. And invited my best friend, which is Viral the DJ, um, to come DJ it. But viral's hilarious, naturally funny. Perfect. He DJs at the Hard Rock. For example, uh, oh, for a shout out, if y'all ever bored or y'all trying to figure out what to do, go to Hard Rock Hotel at Universal Studios. They accept locals because they want you to fall in love with their hotel. It's word of mouth advertisement. And go to the pool, and this motherfucker is DJing. And he's not standing behind a turntable spinning records. He's mixing, and they'll come from behind that bitch. Might be Eddie Murphy one minute. Might be doing the, the, the electric slide with the kids. Like, he's interactive. Hell yeah. But he's naturally just that type of person. He's just funny and fun. Hey, bro, come to Jacksonville. But instead of just DJing, interact with me. Like, we're going to do some old man shit. We're going to do this, this. So me and him interact in our show. That was the first one we did. Then we brought it to Orlando and Longwood with Millennia 3. Um, then we did, like, we've done a couple of shows, man. Or a few shows, Ryan. Right like, seven or eight total. That's Fire in the past three years, man, and it's different. That is dope. It's bro. different. I don't have a lot to promote except for my friends, businesses who interact with me, and also what I do in my show. But if I have to promote something, you got to come to a mixtape. One of those. It's called the mixtape. I call it the mixtape. I'm a music fire. fan. I call it music because the album gonna be the the special. That's fire, bro. The album gonna be the special, but mixtapes right now, and it's. It's an all-inclusive, all-around comedy show. Like, we're not just, it's all right, the show. next comedian, and then the comedian come up and do his thing. And the next comedian, nah, bro. You got, do you, uh. And is he kind of hosting it? He's co-hosting with me. Co-hosting with you. Yeah. Do you have other comics on when you do yes. the next stage? So, I've had, um, I mean, <laughs> you know, the Eddie K's. I've had Cam Patterson. I've had David Jolly. Um, I've had um, Jersey, the Haitian Sensation. Um, I've had a few people do the shows. Dope, uh, invite bro. comics, many, Roberto Font. Uh-huh. Um, you know what I mean? Like I've had these comics do these shows, and I have comics. It's still a stand-up show. It's all around comedy. I don't uh-huh. want to go into too much detail because I want you. I to like come. that, bro. I, no, I, I, I agree. Comics I'm a, more than just stand-up. Have you ever? Do you know who H Dot is? It sounds familiar. He's he, in Orlando. He, he's a local promoter. He does like a lot of club rap stuff like that. Okay, no. But he hosts uh, an event called Coming to America Brunch or something like that. Huge. Huge turnouts. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I would probably say easily, probably in the ballpark, close to 100 people total. Nice. But they do, like, at an event, they do, like, a lot of music, and they do, like, different events and different styles for that. But it might be dope to maybe see if you can link up with him mm-hmm. and see maybe you guys can do, like, a like a because you have your, your DJ friend. Yeah. That might be, like, a good mix to do one for one of his brunches. And they do some good turnouts, okay. and they get lit. So I think that would be pretty I think that would be a dope thing yeah, for you guys to do. Yeah, most definitely. Yo, I'm, that is a crazy him. concept, though. That is, like, an interesting yeah, concept. Yeah, that is cool. I'm not just a stand-up comedian. Like, you can't see That's all what I'm of saying. me in an hour. Yeah. You're not going to see a lot of me in an hour, but you're not going to see all of me in an hour. Yeah. Uh, and that's different, too, bro. I just want to say, like, uh, it's one thing to be like, ah. Oh, I want to do comedy. I want to do stand up. I need 45 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever. Mm-hmm. And that's why you get most of the scuffs, you know, the scoffs like, ah, who's yeah. this motherfucker first year who thinks he could do 45 yeah. minutes or whatever? But it's another thing to be like, no, I need 45. How do I get 45 minutes? How do like, I work I need, on that, bro? Yo, uh-huh. I got to wait to build three different 15 minute sets. Yeah. Well, how long it took y'all? Well, I'm, I'm just now getting to 45. How long you been doing it? 10 years. All right. All right. That's not my, I'm, no, it's not going to work for me. How about you? I'm on eight years. Okay, that's better, but no, that's not. Fuck that, bro. I, fuck that. And in Florida, it's different, bro. Because you, yeah. like, you got to do not just like the scene, mm-hmm. right? 
even if you have the perfect scene every time you go, some of the guys I talk to, they're driving, bro, like yeah. hours to show, to show, yeah. to show, to show. Versus like when you talk about your New Yorks and LAs and shit like mm-hmm. that, you're not driving that yeah. long to go to different spots. You're taking a train or some shit. Yeah, like, it's like yeah. not that far. You know what I mean? It's not that crazy to do like three or four shows. Like yeah. you don't have to try that hard versus like dr- probably like three hours of driving total yeah, and a bro. whole night. I, it was a period. Well, first of all, I live in Point Siena. So everything is downtown, downtown Orlando. So I got to drive an hour anyway. Yeah. Um, but shout out to Jimmy Monahan in the Moon Room um, on Tuesday nights. That's... A dope ass room in Melbourne, hour right. and fifteen away. But when I tell you, it's just it's what you're looking for, not just for. It's not an open mic; it's a showcase. But he's he understands the game. He understands mm-hmm. how it works. He understands that shit. I'm in Melbourne. There ain't really no popping city. So if a comic comes here and they, like he gives you the opportunities, and you get to work in front of a real crowd, and then not only is it like a real crowd, they're good. Like they they here for comedy. Yeah, you know what I mean. So you got that one. I heard uh, a beach records. I haven't done it in, in Coco. Um, I was gonna say, why is it all these beach towns that are like really supportive? Smaller cities, bro. Smaller cities. Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah, bro. It's it's a lot it, to do in Orlando. Less to do. Exactly. There's yeah, so they're on the do. outside, so they have to drive an hour plus That's to get to all this stuff. That's a great event. Shout out to Kevin. Kevin, if he keeps at it, he can tap into a market that every Orlando comic from now to whenever comedy started here. Has missed is that Kissimmee, mm-hmm. St. Cloud, and all like those two, those two little I don't know if you want to call them cities, villages, towns. They're turning into <laughs> yeah, yeah. Osceola County is yeah. a country mm-hmm. county, yeah, right. But it's right next to Orlando, so nobody thinks about it. But they're they're yearning for something different than just going to a bar and getting drunk, or going to Orlando to go find something to do. Yeah, I want to drive. I don't want to drive an hour today. Yeah, and mad shit. That's why yeah. he's he grew up here, so he knows people here, and when he gets it right, it's over, bro. Kissimmee's going to be one of them towns where it's just going to be supporting comedy, it, bro. Easy beyond what you would imagine any Florida town would do because it's one of those cities where we're close enough to go do something. Yeah, but necessarily, I don't necessarily want to drive there today. Yeah, I don't want to drive forty five an hour today. Sometimes I don't want to go fifteen minutes, but I don't want to go drinking every goddamn day. I just don't want to go to a bar and. Trying no, to find a, a, a chick to smash from the bar, or I'm trying to find a friend, or I'm trying to talk to the same bartender. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to do something different. Yeah. He's going to, when he finds it, bro, it's over. Facts. Yeah, no, that's it. That's, that's true, man. That's an interesting concept, especially like how much these towns or whatever the case has been growing. Yeah, man. You know, and to like keep like working at it and working at it as it's growing. Yeah, it's good. The only thing I will say against it, though, and I don't know if it's a thing. It's a it's a thought. The Spanish population. That's what there's I was something saying. about the Spanish, like, and it. No, works. this is Little Puerto Rico for it, sure. Yeah. It works, yeah. for a lot of shows, but it's not necessarily like people yearning for it. Like that's mm-hmm. a percent of the population that might not be yearning for it. Yeah, you know what I mean. So so, because the Spanish love, love to party. Yeah, yeah, they love to have a good time. All you got to do. It showed them that you understand who they've been through the shit. Yep. Especially Puerto Rican. Well, everybody been through shit. Yep. Puerto Ricans been through a lot of shit. Then they come to America and all they know is to work and get my money and then try to figure. It. Same thing with the, the beautiful thing about living in Central Florida is immigrants or Florida in general. It's a lot of people from everywhere else. Mad diverse. So you yeah. learn a lot. But if you can connect with them because they've never been connected to. How many comedy shows you heard about going on in Puerto Rico right. or Cuba or right. Dominican Republic or Haiti? You know what I mean? Or Jamaica. You don't hear about it. So when they move here, they think, oh, I got to come here and I got to get the white picket fence. And I got to do that by working 45,000 hours a week. And I got to do it. And then when they find something where but it's here's just like. here's King Kells relating like heavy. Yeah. This dude's talking. He's from yeah. here. He's, he understands me. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it now yeah. you're hitting a whole nother d- dynamic that hasn't been touched in generations. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I've. I feel like I'm a quarter Puerto Rican now for living in Orlando yep, for so long. You are, but bro. Welcome. Learning, the, <laughs> learning about the culture, bro. They've been through so much. That's why they're so prideful. Yeah. They love their culture because they've been fighting for it since God knows when. They've been slaves, too. You know what I mean? So when you tap into that and you show that you understand it, but then you also show y'all some motherfuckers, too. Like, I yeah. know y'all be bullshit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. then they be like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Now they, now they having fun just like they do. Now they're comfortable. And they're one of the best parties. Mexicans. Fucking, I don't care who it is. Whatever group you tap into, it's all psychological warfare. Yeah. If I can connect with you, we we cool. Yeah. Man, 
So those small cities, bro, they just want to be felt. So yeah. You got is, man. a couple of things. You got, you're talking about the mixtape and that. What's your plan for the album? What's your plan for the special? Like, um, when is there something formalizing yet? Or is it kind of like, let me wait for that to feel right. Let me wait for that opportunity. I got to wait for it. Right? Yep. I know it's there. It's not for me to decide the timing. Right? Like, when that's going to happen, it's going to happen. And you're going to feel it. Yeah. It's, it's going to be clear. It's going to be scary, though. It's going to be scary as shit because shit is happening. Or it don't look like it's supposed to happen right now. But the opportunity is going to present itself. It's just a matter of me taking it. My job right now is just prepare for it. Yeah. Uh-huh. So when the album time is ready, it's going to present itself. And I'm going to be ready because I got the mixtapes. Yeah. Already practicing mm-hmm. this shit. We create our own luck, we've bro. We've already been we've been waiting on this. Bad You're not luck, gonna catch me luck. by surprise. You yep. might catch me by surprise in terms of just popping up on me, but in terms of being ready for it, nah, I'm gonna be ready for that. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, what you think about? Because <clears throat> I feel like, bro, like just the concept itself, and then like how you're describing what viral the DJ does, and then how you perform and stuff. You can make some money off that, bro. <laughs> like, do you know? Are you tapped in with any promoters, or is that like a step, like a big step you're looking for? Yeah, I'm just now. Not Sorry. just one, right? You might need a couple, right? Or whatever the couple. case is. So it's a very, this is a sad thing about, I love Florida, and I love the talent we have here. Whether you're talking about sports, you're talking about entertainment. Like, we have a lot of talent here. Yeah. Uh, but they're so divided. Everybody mm-hmm. wants to do their own thing. They want to climb their own ladder, and hey, fuck you, I'm going to do my own thing. You want to work with me, you have to do it like this. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't want to do it like this because I'm used to... Well, fuck it. We're not working together. And then, you know what I mean? Or there's... I love my city, Jacksonville. There's so many talented hip-hop artists, but they're killing each other. Right. Mm-hmm. Right, 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 You're killing each other. Why are you beefing? Yeah. Well, he said, I'm a fuck nigga on his, on his rap. And, bro... You fucked everything collab. up. Collab. Yeah, yeah. There's a dude from Tallahassee. Oh, fuck Jacksonville. Rappers, y'all need to get on Tallahassee rappers. Why do that? If Nardo Wick is popping and you right down the street in Tallahassee... Fuck with Nardo Wick. Now we done built the empire to where now people want to demand to come to Florida and see us. They're not coming for Disney no more. They're coming to hear your concert. Coming to see your stage. You know what I'm saying? So it's so divided. It's like that in comedy too to the point where everybody's trying to do their own thing. Everybody's trying to... It's not one man, every man for himself. Yeah. As you think it is. We need each other. We build each other. So we got to learn that concept here. With that being said, like, Man, it's, it's, it's something I want to bring. Even in my even at the mixtapes, bro, like part of my mission is to bring the community together. Like I have vendors for food there. Yeah. My homegirl, Shariq, Shariq Eats. She catered my my shows, you know what I mean? Or my, 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 my dude, Mans, he catered the shows before. Like I'm bringing people. The studios I was able to work with, like people don't even know it's a studio in your backyard. That got everything, a green screen, a white room. They got a stage. They got a, a podcast. You don't even know it's right there. Yeah. Let's bring it together. You know what I mean? My man, all seasons with his, you know, he does the pins on the hat. So if you want to put it on your Crocs, like he makes pins, like come. Yeah, bro. Come be a vendor at my show so people can figure out you're here. Yeah. Bring the community together because there's a lot of talent around here, bro. Yeah, man. It's a lot of talent. Which is super dope too. But then also like more specifically is like, I need, I need people to contribute to the show. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I need people that want to like make money off me too, mm-hmm. like who knows business owners and rooms and shit, so we could do this often. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because that's the hard part. That's bro. the hard part. It's like because you got me excited, bro. Because I'm like thinking, it's like yeah, you're like you know all these, you know, everybody knows mad people, right? That mm-hmm. does a bunch of different shit, but it's like getting the right people together at the right time, and then. Usually it's like that person that knows the rooms or has the connection with the rooms. Like that's like kind of like a gatekeeper right yeah, now. Yeah. You know mm. what I mean? It is like mm. that, right? I won't go too deep into that, but yes, it's like that. It's and very it's much like, like that. man, if if King Kel's got dope, funny DJ, you know he could he could hold a show, he could host, he could do it. He don't even like you could talk to him about not even hope, but like you got to get. You know, you got to understand the vibe of the show. It's like, man, you could make some shit work, bro. Something, <sighs> I'm, something I'm believing in, man, and I've heard a lot of successful people say, um, when you're passionate and you're pursuing something for real, I'm talking about from Kobe Bryant to Steve Harvey, when you're pursuing something uh, wholeheartedly, 
the money will find you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The money will search you out. And be like, hey, who is this motherfucker? You know what I mean? Like, I got to go give him some attention because his product is undeniable. That's what this country thrives off of. I give you a product you can't deny. If you can do that, the money will come find you. That's why I'm saying, like, all I'm doing is working on the product right now. Yeah. I need to learn the business side. I am learning the business side. I'm yeah. learning how things work behind the scenes. I'm learning different marketing. Stra- it's not my strength. But I'm learning these different techniques and things where I can contribute and learn and help when it comes to, like, all right, now let's make this a business. Yeah. But right now, we just we just forming the product right now, bro. Yo, just know this, bro. Like, I've, like, talking with, like, Frankie and Kevin and you and stuff, and, like, there's some other comics that I know – Whatever that I haven't necessarily we haven't had on the podcast or whatever, but it's like man, I like subconscious subconsciously actively looking for that person because like I feel like like and we ain't even close like that, but like I would literally be like yo, under, I would sell them this, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like for mm-hmm. real, because I feel like what Frankie does, he does that in Coco because that's his connect, right? You know what I mean? Right. And it's like why can't that be here right. too? You're like, that's a problem. You know, yeah. like, keep doing that. But, like, why can't you do it? Because you could. If he could do it, he could. Right. It's same with you. Mm-hmm. If y'all had, were cap- if y'all had the ability to do it, y'all could do you it. would, yeah. And it's like, man, like, just know, bro. Like, I, that's that's something I, I would. If I ever stumble across that, I know that I'm in arms arms reach of some people to make some shit happen, bro. Like, that's something I would love Closer to Closer than you think. Yeah, man. Closer than you That's fire, bro. Y'all, um. And I mean this genuinely. Please don't hate me. I got the pee. No. Uh, y'all tell me these No, no. Sources. We an hour and 16 minutes, bro. We Do you have anything up. else to say, bro? I would love to talk, man. But you know what I'm saying? Just... Nah, bro. Nothing, this is nah, this, this is pretty much. That was an hour and 16? See what I'm talking yeah, about? Man, yeah, man. Let's go, bro. Thank you for coming, yeah, bro. Thank y'all for having me, bro. Hey, man. This we was super sure. dope conversation. A through Z. We didn't even get to the bullshit clip yeah. comments Did or you. topics or whatever. This was fine. Find me bro. back, goddamn it! I want to no, come back. I like thousand this. percent, bro. Yo, no, we're gonna keep that rotation going, bro. Please like do we, it. we fuck with y'all, bro. And buy me some of these shorts. I like my knees to be out. Sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> no, this is that white boy shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll see if we accept you. <laughs> <laughs> I got weird knees, but it's gonna be all right. <laughs> but no, nah, man. Hey, thank you for tuning in another week. We love y'all. Make sure y'all check all the links in the descriptions and stuff. Uh, Pocket watch out, man. Pocket watch out.